One of the great things about my job is that I get to meet new people every day and every day someone comes in that surprises you. Come on, mate. Hello. Gandalf. Must be showtime. It is showtime, but it was special today because it's in two days' time. Oh. So you need to make it last. You need to make your magic last. Mm. So I think you've broken tradition. I have. I have. Young man? Well, you're the only <laughs> one that called me a young man. I know. Well, I can call anyone young man these days. Yeah. Right. Must be show time. It is, you know what you're doing. Mm. I think uh, you've broken tradition. Oh, don't tell me that. Has to be the same every time, otherwise it doesn't match the promo. Is that right? Are you, are you superstitious? Well, a little bit. A little bit. You've seen my show, I have 13. Yeah, I've fingers. seen your show. Yeah, yeah. Done, yeah. so. I couldn't believe I paid for it, but I see it. <laughs> I say that when I leave here sometimes. So, you know, we're all good. We're all good. <laughs> we're all good. We're all good. <laughs> what have you been busy doing? So. If you can tell by my hands, I am cut and burnt. Why are you cut and burnt? Because I've been messing around with fire on stage like I do. I thought you were professional. Yeah, well, you know, you have to take risks. <laughs> take risks. <laughs> You're just going on stage and burning yourself. The problem I've got now is my Halloween show has got quite a reputation, so people come back. Is that right? Yeah, so people will book for book one, then they go, oh, we'll come and see you next year. So I'm like, okay, so next year has to be bigger, has to be better, has to have a different twist. So I'm pushing myself this year and uh, it's going well, but there's definitely more risks than I would normally take. So what would I expect to see without giving anything away? So we have, uh, you've met my voodoo doll, you've seen my voodoo doll. I have seen your doll. Yeah, this doll, uh, this show is all about the doll. Oh, is it? And what the doll does when I'm not looking. Oh. So it's very much me messing things up and the doll fixing it before I realise. Now, now I want to go to the show. Yeah, well, you would do, but it's in Edinburgh this time, right? And you, you struggle to get to Stratford, so... <laughs> How come you get into going to Edinburgh then? What's the... Is that where you normally go for? Home? No, it's a new one. This is the first time I've done this venue, first time I've headlined in Edinburgh as well, so... You're a headliner? I am. Which also means you couldn't go to the show, because I'm on late. What, because I've got to be like, have my Horlicks and go to bed? <laughs> yes, kind exactly of thing. That. You can't even <laughs> deny it. <You> so, <laughs> oh, I couldn't go that late, Ooh. Oh, Lord of the Rings. Feeling it? Yeah, have you finished it? Yep. So we were right? Yeah. Yeah. Did, you see, so. did you see it coming? I, I, yeah, I did, but only on the last episode. No, I didn't. Genuinely didn't, didn't, and I, I normally do. No, I don't. Know. I see, I never get stuff like that. I, know, I always like watch a movie or I watch TV and then I'll go, ah, oh. I just don't engage my brain at all. I just ah, enjoy the see. moment. And then all of a sudden I went, oh, I think I know what it is. The only time it's ever happened to me before is in the cinema. I was watching The Sixth Sense many years ago and I went in the crowded cinema and I just went, he's dead. That <laughs> was really loud. <laughs> really Brilliant. quiet. And Brilliant. literally everybody around me went, oh. <laughs> well, normally I do notice these things uh, almost instantly because obviously the way that I do my job and I'm like, that doesn't fit. That's only there to see to this and okay. it all up. But that's why I'm still enjoying Inside Number Nine. Yeah. Because I never see those come in. And do you base any of your shows on TV or film? Do you get any ideas from stuff like that? Or When I first started, I'd read comics or watch like superhero films like X-Men and be like, OK. Really? Iceman's pretty cool. He can make ice. How can I do that? Yeah, that's where I got all my inspiration from comics. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Do you make... There's ice makers, though. It's like, like, you know, you can buy them at, like, Amazon stuff. You could, and I could plug it in on stage and say, this is a science <laughs> lesson, let's freeze this water. <laughs> or I can do what I do, where I turn fire into ice. If you came to more of my shows... Oh, give it a rest. <laughs> oh, I did a nice corporate for one of the dragons yesterday, uh, Monday. Dragons? Yeah. As in Dragon's Den, not Game of Thrones. Oh, OK, I was going Game of Thrones. Yeah, no, no. So... It wasn't for the Thesis. Yeah. Was it? Mm. I know him. He, yeah. stole, he stole my camera. Stole your camera. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to work years ago and I was at a skills show in the NEC and I was taking some photos. I'm not a photographer, but I was taking some photos and he was with my boss at the time and he goes, oh, hang on a minute. And he was 
he'd had a couple and he stopped, took my camera and started taking pictures. I was taking pictures of him and he just took the camera and started taking pictures of me. I thought, oh, I'll just go, go with it. And everybody thought it was funny except me. And then he kind of wandered off with it. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you, don't, you don't know him, know him. You were just nearly mugged by him once. I was mugged by him, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's kind of knowing someone, isn't it? You know, you could, if you had a lineup, you could say, well, that's the guy. That's the guy. Yeah. So you kind of know him. Yeah, yeah. He had a chrome Bentley. That was his car. That was, that was not a medical condition. <laughs> <laughs> I see a doctor for that. Do you get nervous when you're before a show, or are you kind of OK with it? Because I know some people get quite, quite nervous. So things like weddings and corporate events, that is just me going to work. That's the same as you get nervous before a haircut. Like you've done it so long and you know that you know what you're doing before, yeah. before you even started, you know it's going to go well. Um, but then the big shows that I've done, like the Assembly Fest and stuff, there was, there was nerves then, especially when it's new. I'm excited about Edinburgh, but I am the headliner. Yeah. Uh, it's obviously been heavily advertised that I am going to be there because I do speciality Halloween. So there's a bit of pressure on me. Is the pressure on you doing the magic or the banter, stand-up? Because it's kind of part stand-up. Yeah, so with this, it's... If you could have the choice, if someone said, right, do you want the magic to be spotless and the entertainment to be average, or do you want the magic to be average and the entertainment to be, like, laugh out loud, you'd pick the entertainment every single time. Okay. Because um, the next day, I don't want people to go, oh, do you remember when he did this thing? I want people to go, do you remember how much fun we had? Although they've got a strange sense of humour in Scotland. What do you mean? They don't like to be fooled. They like to think that they're in on it with you. They've got a very social sense of humour. Didn't you perform magic for the Commonwealth Games? Yes. So... And that is the best example of all the different cultures and countries, yeah. Every group interacts differently. It was right. one of the, That's why that experience was so good because you Americans react one way, it was just... Do you have a, a particular personal favourite in terms of, like, a different culture? Because I imagine they react to magic differently. Like, as a person that watches magic, like yours, I like magic, I don't want to know the trick. If you're presented in a way that makes you appear like you think you're funnier than them, that you're better than them, they want to work it out. They're like, there must be a reason for that. Okay. But if you relax and go with it, people are like, oh, actually, I'm just enjoying this. Mm. Sometimes I perform to people that are on various spectrums, and to them it's not magic, it's a puzzle, and they get their enjoyment from, from working it out, and right. who am I to, okay. to take that away from them? So. Have you got a venue or somewhere that you'd love to perform magic? Do you have like that ultimate goal again? That that would be my zenith of, that would be my crowning achievement. No, and now you've said that, I feel like I should. No, you shouldn't. I feel like I, I did, when I first started, I used to see like fancy venues and stuff and be like, oh, I'd love to get, and one of my favorite things to do when I was new and doing this when I was younger, was when I'd get invited to venues that normally wouldn't let me in. That was always, always <laughs> nice. Sometimes you do private parties at homes as well, and you, I've seen some of the the biggest the biggest homes with private car park, private gates, private swimming pools, and I've done someone's 40th at a normal two up, two down. And one thing you do realise is a home is a home. Like you can have all the flashy bits, mm. but I've been in some very lonely, big big parties where you know that people are only there because of whose ever party is is important, and they don't really want to be there. And then I've been to smaller events where there's just so much like vibe that you're like, this is, this is it, this is a family. So. Yeah. And then what we talked about as well in lockdown, when lockdown hit, and I was sat with my sports car on the drive and designer coats in the wardrobe, everything that I used to think made me successful. And I was like, do you know what, right now I'd trade all of that to go and see my mum and dad. So that humbled me. Yeah, it was very humbling. But yeah, like you, I realised I didn't want to retire. I'd always thought I was working towards retirement. Then I was like, actually, I don't want to sit. To I don't do. want to sit around for covered in cobwebs. I, but I'm already at that point in my life where actually now people say, do you want to do this? And I go, will I like it? Is it fun? Am I going to enjoy it? Because there's nothing worse than do it working for eight hours or whatever long you work for and go, I hate this. But I think lockdown also helped that. It was kind of like focus, laser focused you into going, do you want to do this? Does it make you happy? And that's like a little tape loop in my head. I'm with you. Yeah. Just going, actually, does this make me happy? And if it does, happy days. If it doesn't, then do it.
you're going to get to work with nice people like yourself. Too. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say like that? Said, yeah, you don't know me. You do work with nice people there because you mugged me off the other week and you weren't here. Yeah. And I got Cal and he was ace. Yeah, he's awesome, isn't he? But as a pre show ritual, that's a different chair, different. I was like, oh. But it was fine. So, did we, did we discuss how superstitious you are? Because you've mentioned that twice now. Uh, I, am, I am superstitious, yeah. Does it make a difference? Yeah. Just from a confidence yeah, point just, of view? Just because, yeah. Just because it's confidence. One less thing to worry about, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah. There's little things you can do. So, tomorrow, or Tuesday, Wednesday, when I actually walk out on stage, I'll know that my beer's going to look amazing because you've done it. And there's other little things you can do as well. Like, I wear jeans on stage and I swapped to button up flies. Because there's no chance of them coming open on stage. But it's just little things like that. And tuck your shoelaces in, don't, don't tie them up because okay. then they're not going to come out on stage. Yeah, because I guess that's distracting. Because yeah. even if you don't notice it, that's what everyone's going to be looking at, isn't it? Yeah. Never thought of that. I mean, I, I was a kid in the 70s and there was no... It, it, Colour TV? <laughs> <laughs> well, a little bit of that as well. But there was no filter for anything like that. So as I've gotten older and people, you know, people sort of lovingly call people wokies because they're worried about everything, but I actually quite like it. We have like all, you know, every different kind of, kind of people in here. And to me, everybody's really the same because Everybody wants the same things out of life, happiness and, you know, joy and, and all those kind of things. And, and I don't think that segregating people works, although I'm not totally PC because... Because you're not in the 70s. Because <laughs> I'm not in the 70s. But also, it doesn't always work because actually sometimes you, you do have to make allowances. You know, if someone's disabled, like, we, we know, we have a ramp, which I put in because our, we, our, our front door is not to the floor. And somebody came in and said, oh yeah, that's a legal requirement. And I was like, that's not why I did it. Yeah, like we did it to be- I, I didn't do it to conform to something. I did it because I thought it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And actually an able-bodied person who would walk in wouldn't think twice about it. In fact, quite a few have tripped up on the way out, um, including myself. Um, but I did it because that's not equal in terms of, you know, that they, they can't just walk in, they, they might be in a wheelchair, or, you know, if you've got the opportunity to make anybody else feel more inclusive, more included, or more welcome, then just do it. Do you work in venues where that doesn't happen, or...? No, very rarely now. Yeah. Very rarely. And one thing I absolutely can tell you from doing my job is that at the end of the day, people are people. Yeah, I agree. Right. I agree. There's some exceptions where you meet people you just think, you're genuinely not very nice. But that's, a, that's an it's, effort that they've it, made. It's not, yeah, it is, and I, I agree with you. And, and you know, you see it online sometimes when you get the trolls and stuff like that and, and you just think, it's quite a lot of effort, <laughs> it's a lot of effort. to, to yeah. be mean. And do you know but what's funny? It still does I actually register. had this conversation earlier. So, shockingly, I used to have dark hair. And what happened was, I used to get, oh Jesus, and stuff like that, like a lot, and then people nudging themselves six or seven times a day. But dressing up, people don't do it as much if you dress up, because they're like, oh, from the neck up, he looks homeless, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> and then um, I, can't, and I can't quite work this out, kind of thing, because I like to dress up. But when I went grey, people stopped doing it. People just stopped doing it. We, like, almost everything wow, just stopped doing it. And it's like, do you not want to pick on old people? What's the, <laughs> what's the deal he's here? He's got enough going on. Yeah, he's, so. got, he's got, he's got, oh, bless him. <laughs> but it just stopped. If I do a show and I look up and there's 120 people in the audience and 119 people are clapping, guess which one I see? It's just that, that is a performer's... Now, performance that's interesting thing. because we talk about that sometimes in the shop. So if, for instance, somebody... Um, I mean, really, what you say to people in the... You know, if somebody's not happy with their haircut, so you say, well, come back and we'll just do a bit, you know, whatever. Usually it's people that don't know what they want in the first place, but, that's, you know, sometimes that's the case. So... So when you're doing something, why, like I say to my guys, why, when you've had 200 great reviews, why are you concentrating on the bad one? What, why don't you concentrate on those 200 good ones? So well, you're saying the same thing. So yeah, why, do, why do you concentrate on the, the negative one when you've had like, if you've got 200, 500 people in an audience, you're concentrating on the one, 
what about the other 499 people that are really happy? Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, when you say it like that, it makes perfect sense, but it's just not it's just, how it's not how I, No, I, 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 to I, I totally agree with you. Because, and then you, know, you see the flip side, where you see performers who think they're better than they are, because when people, when people say to them at a wedding, <laughs> oh my God, you're the best magician ever, they, they, they hear that. Right. And it's rather than being, well, actually, thank you very much, and in your head you think, well, that's the best one now, but... So you're saying some people lack humility? Some people lack, yes, yeah, some people believe their own hype. And then some, some people will never, never think their they're, they're good is good enough. So it's an interesting mix. Right, OK. So what you're saying then is that you're, I mean, I'm, I'm taking that now that you're putting yourself in the thanks, but I don't totally believe that. Yeah, always. OK. Which is why you always want to do better. You always want your next show to be bigger and better. So you, You've surprised me, but my other part of my brain now is kicking in where I play the guitar and I'm getting all right. Not, you know, but I'm getting all right. And I always think, no, no, but that's where I want to be that level, that level. When I get to that level, I go, I want to be that level. And yeah. so you never, which is probably a good thing because that means you're pushing yourself. You should always push yourself, but there's that thing about don't let perfect stand in the way of good. Is, is there a, a trick that you would always want to do that you've never done but you would love to do but he's not in your level for whatever reason maybe that reason is because budget or whatever or i don't know skill level i don't know how it works with magicians there's a, a routine that one of my friends does at weddings where the wedding rings become joined on or through a playing card wow. i love it but it's his and um, he created it, he road tested it, he made it work. So without his permission, I would never, never do it. So that's always on there. Mm, that's interesting. Mm. But I, I, have people stolen it? Uh, they've definitely tried. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I could show you six people on Instagram now doing stuff that I have created and have never said, go ahead and do it. Oh, so, really? Yeah, it's so definitely you've happened. Been... Is, and do you take that as, are you annoyed by that or do you take it as, wow, that's really cool, they're copying me, which means obviously I must be quite good. So the first time it happens, you're angry and you're like, there must be something I can do and there's not. So and then by now I'm like, oh, that's cute. Would you be able to do magic in front of other magicians? Is that something you would do? Yeah, yeah. In January I'm going to start writing a lecture Okay. to go and talk to other magicians so you would be like when you say talk to other magicians so you're like bringing up the next generation of magicians or just sharing sharing knowledge sharing wisdom okay. so the same way as if you did science you'd do a science lecture and things that work so okay. you're gonna do that that's quite a big deal i think doing a lecture as well <laughs> well yeah it goes well what happens if it doesn't do you just disappear in a box that's it yeah you get, <laughs> give your uh, give you one back and uh, <laughs> the mentors get you This is definitely for me. Like, this yeah. is the one time when I'm not on show and I'm not having to be anyone. I can sit down to you and just whinge. Yeah. So, you're not like my little counselling session. People have said that before. I don't really think about it like that, but it often gets mentioned about that. I know there's quite big things in like mental health with guys that they don't, they don't really have many intimate relationships because we're not intimate creatures. And then the barbering one, is kind of one of those moments, probably because we're so close to your face. Yes, 100%. Um, also, I love you because I can tell you absolutely anything and you're so geriatric that next week you'll be like, what's new? <laughs> He's having the same conversation. <laughs> that's what, do you not realise that's what we've been doing every week? No. Do you know what's been putting me off? My good looks. No, I don't know if you've noticed, but behind you, there's a woman with a camera. There's one over there as well. I don't know if anyone's told you this, but this isn't normal. Well, there's one there, and there's one behind you. Is that, is that not normal? No, you've been out to know they've not been here the whole time, and I'm like, I'm just going to let them know. I mean, I've had a great day. I've been pampered and everything, but... I thought everyone had their own, like, documentary team right. that they walk around with. No? Are, are you in trouble? Always. Is this going to be like... <laughs> Not as much as you are, are they? This is going to be a serial killer documentary. <laughs> oh, that's good. Five years younger. I was going for three, but... Come on. Tell yourself five. Yeah, tell myself five. Happy with that? Happy with that. Thank you very Has much. Has the uh, pre-show kicked in? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Good. I'm feeling good. Good. I'm going pack. 
So this is the weird bit, right? When I was trying to pack for the show this yeah. morning and work out what I was going to do, I knew if I waited till if I felt right, I'd be like, right, now I know what I'm going to do. Now I can go and do this show. How weird is that? Yeah. That is weird. Mm. You're a strange man. I am, but I then that's we, why I like, we, we that's why I like you. Together. <laughs> yeah. Good luck in Edinburgh, sir. Oh, mate, it's going to be big. I'll, um, I'll let you know how it goes. Please do. Do you want to bring him back? Um, Everyone's got like requests. Like uh, Scottish some, whiskey or something. Something Scottish. Tartan pants. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah, okay, that all right? you leave that with me. Yeah, all right. You leave that with me. Thank you. Men's. So, well, boys. <laughs> what does that mean? So, I've just realised that this has been filmed. I can just keep on walking because they'll be like, oh, he's going to come back and hand the mic back. But these are worth 150 quid and I won't have to pay for the haircut. I think so. you could get rid of that on down the street. I'm off, mate. I'm off. All right. I'll let you know. Thanks, mate. Sort this out. It's weird. Bye. <laughs> and it's 500 quid. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't coming, <laughs>